Just ahead, the gripping but sad story of Sue Rodriguez and the manner of her death. Uh, I, I must accept this and understand death and dying more and come to grips with that. Sue Rodriguez never wanted to be famous. She just wanted to be able to die peacefully, without pain, and with some dignity. She has a chronic disease which robs her of many of life's simple pleasures, and which, sometime soon, will rob her of life itself. Sue Rodriguez wants to choose when she dies, but that wish has brought her into conflict with Canadian law. This is Sue Rodriguez in happier times, eight years ago, a bright, cheerful, athletic woman married with a young son. In 1991, Rodriguez was diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS. It's a disease of the nervous system that slowly destroys all muscle control, and eventually, it kills. It's most commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease, after the New York Yankee baseball star who died from it in the 1940s. And this is Stephen Hawking, the noted British physicist, a man with a brilliant mind, but a body disabled by ALS. All this work, good God. <laughs> oh, I know, but look at the ends are healed. Looks great. And here again is Sue Rodriguez, 15 months after her diagnosis. So it's gotten to the point where I really need someone around most of the time. Or certainly, you know, in the morning and evening periods where I'm having to get dressed or be bathed or fed. And it takes a long time. Like it might be Oh, it does. I feel like I'm in a slow motion movie. Or it takes forever. And it will get worse. It usually takes between two to five years for ALS to kill its victims. At this point in her illness, walking, talking, swallowing, even breathing is difficult for Rodriguez. She will lose the ability to do all of these things. Human helpers in her home won't be enough. Only machines will be able to keep her alive, feeding her through tubes and helping her breathe. I just feel that there's no way I want to continue after a certain point, and that's sad. I feel like I've already put things to rest in my mind as to how far I'm going to go. How will you know when you've reached that point? I don't know. That's something I can't answer. I'll just know and I'll say it's time. Rodriguez could ask the doctors to stop treating her at a certain point, but she would likely face a horrible death by suffocating or choking. But Rodriguez wants to die with dignity. Legally, Rodriguez could take her own life. Suicide was removed from the criminal code in 1971. But Rodriguez is physically unable to kill herself. She wants a doctor to help her, and that isn't legal. In Canada, the law says that people cannot aid, abet, or counsel suicide. It could mean 14 years in prison. Rodriguez wants the criminal code amended so that doctor-assisted suicide is no longer a crime. Last November, she asked Parliament to change the criminal code. She made a videotaped appeal to a justice subcommittee of the House of Commons. Soon I will be unable to walk. I will be unable to breathe without a respirator. The NDP Sven Robinson is a big supporter of Rodriguez. You'll get a respectful hearing. Uh, the video will be shown. Liberal MP Don Boudria is against legalizing doctor-assisted suicide. When people can't attend a meeting, they send a brief. Why is it not a brief this time? It's a video because the video in the particular case is going to have effect because it's a person that's dying and that's very dramatic and the person that's bringing it to us wants us to see just that. He wants to advance uh, the cause by the effect that it can portray. The House of Commons rejected an NDP motion to change the law. While Parliament considered the issue, Rodriguez went to court, first to the British Columbia Supreme Court. Her main argument is that the law against doctor-assisted suicide is unconstitutional. The sections that we're going to be challenging are first under Section 7, which is, includes the right to life. And her position is that the right to life includes the right to a dignified death 
under the circumstances. Secondly, Section 12, that it's cruel and unusual treatment uh, for her to be uh, not able to have somebody to assist her under these circumstances. And then finally, that the laws under the criminal code violate Section 15 because they don't give equality to her. Because she's disabled, she isn't able to take her own life under the circumstances in the end of the day, and she needs somebody to help her. Two weeks later, the B.C. Supreme Court ruled, and Rodriguez lost. I'm feeling um, discouraged, but I feel strongly that um, terminally ill people who are mentally competent should have the cho choice of time uh, as to when to die and so But in his decision, Justice Alan Melvin expressed concern for others. He believes that Section 241 of the Criminal Code protects the innocent, the mentally incompetent, and the depressed. Next was the B.C. Court of Appeal. Two groups who had argued against Rodriguez were back, the Pro-Life Society of B.C. and the Pacific Physicians for Life. Their lawyer pointed out that only the Netherlands permits doctor-assisted suicide and that doctors in some parts of the United States can be charged with murder for helping someone commit suicide. Once again, the decision was not in Sue Rodriguez's favor, but this time it was a split decision. Obviously, I have a lot of mixed emotion today. <coughs> Two judges ruled against Rodriguez, including Justice Patricia Proudfoot, who said the broad religious, ethical, and moral social issues implicit in the merits in this case are not suited to resolution by a court. But the Chief Justice of the B.C. Court of Appeal ruled for Rodriguez. Alan McEachern wrote that any law which imposes an indeterminate period of senseless physical and psychological suffering upon someone who is shortly to die anyway cannot conform with any principle of fundamental justice. But still, it was two against one. The only recourse left was the Supreme Court of Canada. It agreed to hear the case on May 20th, five months after she first went to court. The hearing was an extraordinary one, not only because it was dealing with such an emotionally charged case, but because for only the second time ever, the Supreme Court allowed live broadcasts of its work. There you see now the uh, justices are coming in. Let me explain. The pictures from the Supreme Court come from a television system that the justices themselves had installed. There you see the court there now with Antonio Lemaire, the Chief Justice, standing in the middle. Along with the cameras, lots of lawyers, one for Sue Rodriguez, others for the federal and the British Columbia governments, and lawyers for seven different interest groups on both sides of the issue. And while they argued in Ottawa, Sue Rodriguez watched it all on television in Victoria. I only hope that they consider this on a compassionate level as well as um, dealing with all the legalities. The facts are particularly grim. <clears throat> Mrs. Rodriguez is age 42. She's married. She has an eight-and-a-half-year-old son. And she has a life expectancy remaining of between one month and 13 months. For hours, lawyers representing several groups argued that the law against doctor-assisted suicide discriminates against disabled people. Now, Section 241 sub B was certainly not intended, uh, as far as we can tell, to discriminate against persons with disabilities. But its effect on the appellant and on others like her is to deny her a right of choice and a matter of fundamental personal importance, and that is a choice which the law allows to all able-bodied Canadians. But the lawyer for a group called People in Equal Participation raised concern that there would be pressure on disabled people to commit suicide. My clients are concerned that what becomes accepted may become expected. They fear that they will be subject to increased pressures, however subtle, to follow the example of Nancy B. and Sue Rodriguez. They will be expected to free up the bed. I think the question put to you by the court by, by my colleagues, is that how do we rationalize carving out the terminally ill from the disabled? Those who are terminally ill are in the process of dying, and we are regulating or helping them to regulate that dying process. Lawyers for the federal government and the B.C. government argued against the Rodriguez request. 
submit that the legislative history, especially recent developments through the Law Reform Commission reports and the parliamentary vote in March of this year, express Parliament's intention that as a matter of important social policy, physician-assisted suicide should continue for the time being to remain unlawful, even for the terminally ill. The lawyer for Pacific Physicians for Life Society was back in court. Doctors have not asked for this. Uh, there are no other medical bodies intervening before you. There is no evidence that doctors themselves wish to have the uh, ability or the right to provide this uh, uh, form of service. And indeed, the uh, medical ethics, uh, canons of medical ethics, forbid it. The Right to Die Society was also represented. If Parliament is concerned about the possibility of abuse, it is, in my submission, up to Parliament to draft a law which is more tailored to these concerns. Mrs. Rodriguez and others like her, whether they are terminally ill or not, should not, and in my submission under the Charter, cannot be denied assistance pursuant to Section 241B on the rationale of protecting a few, that is, these so-called vulnerable groups in our society. At the end of the day, the Supreme Court reserved decision, meaning they would spend some time looking over the arguments and return with a ruling at a later date. In the months since that Supreme Court hearing, Rodriguez has grown weaker. In July, the CBC's Jerry Thompson went to see how she was doing. With all the energy she can muster, Sue Rodriguez clings to life, determined to enjoy as best she can whatever time is left. With that trademark smile of hers, she rolled along the seawall beside Vancouver's English Bay this afternoon, basking in the sun. Although she appears radiant, her day-to-day -day reality is quite different. Most days now, she spends the vast majority of her time in bed on strong painkillers and anti-nausea pills. ALS has just about immobilized her. It has sapped her strength and all but stilled her voice. Two more people in similar circumstances have come forward. Erwin Crickhan in Toronto also has ALS. Like Rodriguez, he wants a doctor-assisted suicide. He's waiting to hear what the Supreme Court says, but if the court says no or simply takes too long to decide, he's determined to end his own life. I definitely try to get some pills, sleeping pills, uh, so that I can fall asleep or so. That's my wish, uh, the way to go, you know. Uh, the Right to Die Society of Canada has pledged to assist Erwin Crickon whenever he's ready to go. Earlier this week in Vancouver, Linda Ross asked John Hofsis, executive director of the Right to Die Society, to help her as well. She too was suffering from ALS. She too wanted a doctor-assisted suicide. Hofsis videotaped her final request. And now I would like someone to but ALS had already made it impossible for Linda Ross to eat. When Hopsis met her, she could barely swallow water. She had refused an IV drip, not wanting to prolong her suffering. Therefore, she had been slowly starving for more than two weeks when these pictures were taken. Linda Ross died on Saturday morning. The request for doctor-assisted suicide is no doubt one of the toughest decisions the Supreme Court of Canada has ever been asked to make. But waiting for an answer is difficult as well. Sue Rodriguez has been waiting nine weeks. Finally, on September 30th, nine months after her legal battle began, the Supreme Court announced its decision. Tonight, the Rodriguez decision. The Supreme Court says no. Rodriguez received the news by fax. MP Sven Robinson helped her go through it at her home in Victoria. And then she headed for a news conference. It was a split decision by the Supreme Court. Four justices, including the Chief Justice, ruled in her favor. They wrote that death is the final act in the drama of life, an integral part of life and should be protected under the Charter of Rights. But the majority, the five other justices, ruled against Rodriguez. They wrote in their opinion that an individual's right to die is not more important than the state's interest in protecting people who are weak and vulnerable. It's the end of her fight in the courts. 
But in a voice barely audible, Sue Rodriguez told the news conference she hopes Parliament will take another look at the issue. I hope Parliament will act. Sue hopes that Parliament will deal with this issue once it reconvenes after the election. She realizes that it may be too late for her, but for all other Canadians who are in a similar predicament, this issue should be resolved in Parliament. And as you all know, the Gallup polls indicate that an overwhelming majority of the people of this country support Sue's view. A recent poll of the Canadian Medical Association doctors uh, to, of those responding indicated there should be changes in the law, over 60%. And that the judges in the courts below have all said that Parliament should deal with this issue. An unidentified doctor is said to be ready to help Rodriguez commit suicide, even though the Supreme Court says it's still against the law. Rodriguez declined to tell reporters what her plans are.